<laughs> Keep looking, Rosie. Okay, if you're looking for a good core workout, I think I might have one for you. Raking dead grass from mud. Boy, it'll get you. So a few days ago, somebody reached out to me uh, via my email, themoderneoman at gmail.com, and asked me what I thought the most important tools on my homestead are. And at first I wanted to say, I don't really have a most important tool. It really depends on the situation. It's kind of like asking me, what's your favorite, coffee or tea? Depends on my mood. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized there are a handful of tools that stand out in the past, how long has it been? Six months since I moved onto the homestead that have kind of risen to the top as tools that I use a lot of and I couldn't get much done without of. I'll tell you what those tools are, but first, a couple of quick updates. So update number one, this should be the last unplugged edition of the Modern Yeoman. My computer will be up and running by the time you watch the next episode. I usually post on Wednesdays and Sundays. So by the time the Sunday episode rolls around, everything should be back to normal. It's funny, a lot of people commented that it, it's been great without the music. They think it's more natural. And a lot of people say, man, they really miss the music. What is this growing out of my mulch? How is that happening? How are things already growing out of my mulch? That too? What? Okay, that's, it doesn't speak well to the weed stopping abilities of mulch. Does anybody know what this stuff is? I mean, it's fair to say weeds, but man, alive, it just popped up within a span of two or three days. Right through the mulch, it muscled its way up through the mulch here. Anyways, what was I talking about? My computer, that's right, I'll have it back. This week, next episode, I'll have my normal editing tools back. Update number two, I'm very excited about. Look who is back in her corral here in the carport. I fixed the blades on this thing. It wasn't actually nearly as hard as I thought it would be. I actually bought two blades, a little more expensive than I wanted them to be, but now I have a spare blade for the next time I screw up and hit something, which actually reminds me I found the root that I hit. It's really gnarly. I'll show you what it looks like. See that? Doesn't look that crazy, right? Looks pretty low to the ground, right? Well, apparently it was enough to completely damage the entire riding lawnmower blade. You can kind of see where I cut into it here, right there. To a little bit of credit to myself, I was heading uphill. This is a hill you can kind of see, and this was really long grass, so it obscured this route. So I didn't even see it at all. And I must have, the mower must have been at an angle when I hit this thing and just cranked it down on it. And I imagine it got wedged in here before it pried loose uh, and did, did its dirty work. It was enough to bend the blade. So I need to put like a flag right here or some orange spray paint or something. So I watch out like this kind of stuff is all over the lawn. I just need to be extra vigilant as I'm driving. I don't know, maybe I need to take a, a walk ahead of my mower in sketchy areas just to make sure I'm not gonna run into something. My last quick update here, I am so pumped about, I am so excited about, I was finally able to order some compost for delivery here, 10 cubic yards from a local compostery here in the Knoxville area, an outfit called Living Earth. And there's good news and bad news with it. The good news is that I was able to get a really good price on a blend called Magic Mix. It's composed of mushroom compost and 
some sort of topsoil. I forget exactly the, the mix components of it, but local gardeners around here swear by this mix, this magic mix. So I was able to get that 10 cubic yards of it. The bad news is that they will be unable to deliver this compost until April 1st. April Fool's Day. So we have to wait two more weeks or so to get our garden started. Now, I know you might be saying, yeah, you can still get a lot of work done in prep, and that's what we will be doing. But still, grow, getting the food in, the, getting the plants, the starts, the veggie starts in the ground will be such an important moment for us. That's one of the primary reasons that we even started this homestead was to start growing our own food. And we plan to start growing a lot of it. We wanna hit the ground running here within the next few weeks. So yes, we have to wait a couple of weeks to get the garden, to get the compost here and get the garden started. But in the meantime, I think what we're gonna do is hopefully either next weekend, this coming weekend or next weekend, we are going to go buy as many of our seed starts as we can, and we'll keep them out here. We'll keep them on a table or on this patio out here just to harden them up. I don't think that we will have any more frosts here in Eastern Tennessee for the rest of the year. I'll have to check the weather on that, but assuming that we don't, I'm gonna get, we're gonna get all of those veggie starts and get them outside so they'll be ready to go and hit the ground running once the compost gets here. Before I get into it, I should probably say this. This list is not meant to be exhaustive. There are a ton of different tools here on the homestead and each one of them is important for its own particular task. I'm also not trying to imply that you'll only need these four tools if you wanna start a homestead. No, I've been here now for about six months and throughout those six months, there are four particular tools that have kind of stood above the rest in terms of how much I use them and how multi-purpose they are. Now you may disagree in the importance of these tools and that's fine. The email asked me what tools I've found in my own experience to be the most important here on my homestead. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Also real quick, I'm not including landscaping implements. So things like the mower, chainsaws, the brush clearing attachment on my weed whacker. That's the type of category that I think might merit its own video down the line. So with all that being said, let's go check it out. Item number four on the list is this handheld sledgehammer. I originally bought this back in September to drive a stake into the ground, but since then I've been really surprised at how many different types of projects I've used it for. Everything from busting apart this old staircase that I used to make this raised bed out of, to breaking up these old cabinets that I pulled out of the barn when I was cleaning it up, to installing the brackets for my DIY lumber rack system up in the hayloft, to its actual original intended purpose of driving stakes into the ground. You might remember a few videos ago when I had those four foot long rebar posts that I'm using to stabilize the pallets for my compost stall. This thing got them into the ground with no problems at all. And to be honest, I use this for all of my nailing projects now just because it's got a lot more oomph than a regular claw hammer does. And notice that's why I said handheld sledgehammer. As fun as one of those 50 pound swing over the shoulder sledgehammers probably is, I don't think it's nearly as versatile as this guy is or easy to carry around. So that's number four on my list and I'm really glad that I have it. Item number three on my list are these special tin snips. They're actually called aviation snips. And originally I bought them to cut sheet metal out for the chicken coop, which they cut sheet metal very well, much better than regular tin snips. But I soon found out that they have a lot of different applications. Anything that you would use razor blade for, like cutting thick carpet, they do a wonderful job and they're a lot easier to use. But they also cut things like hardware cloth. In fact, let me show you how much better these cut hardware cloth than regular old tin snips.
You know, with as many applications on the homestead that we use these things for, hardware cloth, chicken wire, sheet metal, of course, netting, etc. I'd say I'd reach for these things at least once a week. So another tool that I'm really glad to have here on the homestead, one of my favorites. Tool number two on my list is the good old fashioned chop saw, otherwise known as a miter saw. Now you might be wondering why I'm including the chop saw on my list and not some other saw like a jigsaw, for example, or a circular saw. Well, the answer honestly is that I use it a lot more. It tends to be quite a bit easier for me to use than those other saws. It cuts two by fours and two by twos and one by ones and even four by fours and poles like nobody's business. I can't think of a single piece of infrastructure here on the homestead so far that I haven't used this chop saw for as my primary cutting implement. The chicken coop, the meat chicken tractor, even the raised beds. And yes, sometimes I do need to make an extra cut or two for wide pieces of wood like this, but if I could only pick one saw to have on the homestead, it would be the chop saw. Now we come to the final tool on the list, the number one spot on my list, and that's a tool I use far more than any other here on the homestead, the impact driver. And notice how I said impact driver and not drill. There is a difference. You hear that? That's a little something called torque. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't originally have this impact driver when we moved here onto the homestead. I just had a regular old drill, but once my parents moved here, I discovered the pure bliss of using an impact driver. This is actually my dad's impact driver. Long story short, the impact driver can exert more torque through the bit, that's my understanding of it, whether it's a screw head, a drill head, or a socket attachment. Which reminds me, I actually used the impact driver to get the blade nut off of my lawnmower blade. My standard ratchet certainly couldn't do that, and neither could a wrench. It took seconds with the impact driver. At this point, I used the impact driver for anything that I'd use the drill for. It's faster, more powerful, and it never strips out any screws that I'm working with. Without question, I've used this far more than any other tool on the homestead. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't buy a drill, I'd buy an impact driver. So those are the four tools that have been the most important to me on my homestead. Remember, I'm not consumer reports and you may completely disagree with the merit of these tools. I'm basing my opinion completely on my own experience for the past six months. So take that for what it's worth. Anyways, thanks for hanging out on this last unplugged edition of the Modern Yeoman. And until next time, remember, slowly, Slowly.